discussed so far is a time consuming process first of all. It requires simultaneous plating that means these plasmids when it is placed into the media it requires simultaneous plating also into ampicillin resistance genes into tetracycline resistance genes and also it is a time consuming process. So we have an alternative method that can be used. Let us see what the alternative method is all about. This alternative method is from this point this vector which is going to carry the foreign DNA into it we are going to place this vector into lac z gene. I am not rubbing this because I want you to remember it. So I will use this part of the board. This is the lac z gene. In lac z gene this is the place where the capping here are the cap end you can say then RNA polymerase is binding helping in RNA polymerase binding here is the operator region. So lac z gene a quick revision I have done capping to so that RNA polymerase can bind to it and then the operator region then comes our lac z gene. You remember in lac z gene we are using this portion that means lac z here is lac y and here it is lac a. So this portion in this portion we are going to insert this foreign DNA. That means the foreign DNA will be inserted into this lac z gene now. Now let's place it in lac z gene and see what is the result. Here the foreign DNA is going to be placed in lac z gene. We know lac z gene encodes beta galactosidase. This we know it encodes beta sorry beta galactosidase. Now as we have introduced the foreign DNA into it so it will not be able to produce beta galactosidase. As the foreign DNA is being introduced into lac z gene, lac z gene encodes beta galactosidase. So as the foreign DNA is inserted into this lac z region, it has not been able to produce beta galactosidase. This is known as insertional inactivation. What is it known as? Insertional inactivation. That means due to, due to insertion of the foreign DNA, the beta galactosidase that is found in this region has been inactivated. This is the meaning. Now what we have done? This process is an alternative method. It is not this method. Right now we are not using this method. We are using a alternative method. Why? Because this method is long. This is requiring simultaneous plating also. So alternative method. In the alternative method what we have done is instead of placing this foreign gene into this plasmid vector our choice is right now lac z gene. We have chosen lac z gene and we know lac z gene is going to uh, produce beta galactosidase. So we are going to take this foreign DNA and we are going to place it in lac z gene and due to this insertion of the foreign DNA into lac z gene insertional inactivation has taken place not activation it is insertional inactivation take place and beta galactosidase is not found. There is no beta galactosidase. No beta galactosidase. I am not writing such a big name. Now we take this recombinant. This is our in our alternative method. This is the preparation of the recombinant. This is our recombinant and now we take this recombinant and place it this is going to carry the foreign DNA. We know this is our recombinant vector. Right now our recombinant vector is lac z, z or you can say lac z gene and we place it into a chromogenic substance. Let me rub this so that it's a little bit clear otherwise it's going it might by inserting the foreign DNA into lac z gene we can take this vector now 
and place it in a chromogenic substance. This is the alternative method I am using. This say it is a chromogenic substance. X gal. This chromogenic substance will give a color. This is going to uh, give a color so that we can distinguish which is the recombinant and which is the non-recombinant. The one that will carry this foreign DNA is a recombinant and the one that will not carry this foreign DNA is a non-recombinant. Now the recombinants, now we take the plasmids again. Sorry, this is not going to be in this way, but still to show it to you, I have chosen this shape, not the same vector. Remember that now we are placing uh, lac Z. This is lac Z only coming here. This is the chromogenic substance we have used which will give a blue color. This is a chromogenic substance which gives which color? Blue color. Now which one will give a blue color and which one will not give? Let's see that this is the chromogenic substance that has been used as a medium and all the plasmids whether it's recombinant or the non-recombinant have we have taken the foreign DNA we have inserted into lac Z gene and thus we have prepared our vector and this vector right now is carrying the foreign DNA if it is not carrying it is not non-recombinant and now we have chosen a chromogenic substance which is X gal X gal is the name of a chromogenic substance which will give blue color now which one will give blue color and which one will not give blue color that we need to do the screening process. From that screening process, we will be able to understand which is the recombinant and which is the non-recombinant. Let's see. Some of them are carrying this lac Z gene has been inserted. And this is all lac Z. This is not the plasmid vector right now. It is our vector right now is uh, lac Z. And some are carrying the foreign gene and some are not carrying. This is a hypothetical shape I have drawn. Okay. So, and the substance is chromogenic. That it, it will give color. What color? Blue color. Now, see the strange activity over here. Here, as these are carrying the foreign DNA. So, these are recombinants and these are non-recombinants. In this case, what is happening? The non-recombinants which are present are taking a blue color. The non-recombinants are giving blue color and the recombinants are not giving any color. So this is a process of screening. This is the non-recombinant which does not have the foreign gene in it. So this is giving shows blue color when placed in X gal and the recombinants show no color I'm using this recombinants show no color there is no color why because the recombinants are carrying that foreign gene and that will not be emitting any color so x gal is an excellent media for us to do the process of screening, you can say this is the process of screening that is done with the help of this chromogenic substance that is blue and white screening process and the recombinants one, these are the recombinants one which are white, no color and the non-recombinants one are having color. And now you take the recombinant ones, you can preserve it at a temperature say minus 20 to minus 80 degrees proper conditions so that you can be you can use this recombinants for the purpose of cloning. I hope the process is very simple. Two methods we have used. One was with ampicillin and tetracycline. That method the result let me give a quick revision in that method when we place the plasmids vectors into ampicillin all of them grew whether it is recombinant or non-recombinant and when we placed it in the media where there was tetracycline present now in that case we found the recombinant shows no growth why because already they have lost the resistance to tetracycline and the non-recombinants grew 
So that was the process of ampicillin and tetracycline being used as selectable markers. But in that process we found that it is time consuming, it was requiring simultaneous plating also, it was cloning is a very expensive process also many methods are there a set of methods are have to be followed properly so it is definitely expensive but an alternative method we have used which is quite simple in this case what we have done we have taken the foreign gene and we have used lag z gene which is encoding beta galactosidase as our vector and this is going to be placed these are recombinant ones which are going to be placed in x gal that is the chromogenic substance in this case we found the result was the non recombinance which does not carry the foreign DNA shows blue color and the recombinant ones which had the foreign DNA in it shows no color. Right now today I have discussed with you gene cloning only. There are other artificial cloning methods also. Reproductive cloning is there, therapeutic cloning is there where cloned individuals can be prepared and uh, those processes I will be discussing in other videos. Right now the applications of gene cloning we know there is a set of experimental methods applied in the field of molecular biology and this will bring an assembly of the recombinant molecules that will help in the replication process in the host organism. This will produce identical copies of genes which are gene size DNA molecules you can take and this will be helping us in various fields. What are the fields? application can be used in genetic disorders say thalassemia say thick uh, sickle uh, cell anemia or down syndrome these type of disorders treatment process can be carried out with the help of this molecular cloning so i i have not got uh, into this portion of reproductive cloning and therapeutic cloning this i will be doing in my later videos for time being i am just taking a sign off. I'm signing off from here. Do encourage me to give you more videos on this. I hope you have enjoyed uh, in learning and keep encouraging me and supporting me. Thank you.